The other big feature, and it's huge, and it's fun to play with, is called Magnetic Mask. One of the big challenges that we have is that we record the actor in an environment A, and we realize that we needed to change that to environment B. If they're recorded against a green screen, it's relatively trivial, but that means that during production, we have to know that we're going to change the background to record the actor in front of a green screen. What happens if we fail to do that? Then we're in the area called rotoscoping, and rotoscoping is time-consuming, expensive, laborious, and painful. There is nothing to recommend about rotoscoping except possibly avoiding it. But here, I have a woman, and her hair is blowing in the wind. This is about as bad a situation as it gets because hair is almost impossible to rotoscope. That's why people wear caps and wear their hair in tight buns. If you're going to rotoscope, give yourself a solid surface to work with. This is terrible. So what I want to do is I want to drop that background out and put her into a different background. How do I do that? Well, this time we go back to the effects window, and I'm going to search for magnetic mask. I could drag the effect on top of the clip, but it's more effective if I take the mask and drag it directly on top of her, and notice how she changes color based upon the area that I'm selecting. I'm not only dragging the mask in, I'm selecting the area to be masked. Once I've done that, these tools open up. This is very much like the the motion tracker that we've worked with earlier. If you don't need to make any changes, and I won't for this one, click Analyze. It starts at the position of the playhead, and it goes all the way to the end of the clip. And it goes back to the position of the playhead, and it scans forward to the very beginning of the clip. And now I've got that magnetic mask analyzed. It's, it's created the mask based upon the area that I have selected, and when you're ready, click Done. And now I've isolated her from the background. Let's turn the new background on and go to the beginning and play it. I would not want to draw that rotoscope. Now here we've got a little bit of, as always, we've got a little bit of a glowing area. We want to select that, go up to Magnetic Mask, and let's just feather that just a hair Try to get rid of some of that edging. And now when I play it back, isn't that amazing? Wow. Let me give you another example. Here, I have a woman walking out a long road toward the ocean. I want to replace the background, but keep the road and keep the woman. How do I do that? I want to put this on the very first frame, and I'll explain why in a second. With this on the very first frame, now I'm going to drag the magnetic mask, select the street, okay, street selected, but I haven't selected her. So I'm going to click the plus key, and now I'm going to drag, and just like with the quick masking tool inside Photoshop, I'm going to drag to sort of select her body. Okay, but I've got too much, so I'm going to click the minus button. I'm going to try to drag off and select. It doesn't have to be perfect. But anything that I can do to decrease that selection area will make a difference. I'll show you why in a second. Once you've got that area selected, click Analyze. And it now goes through the entire clip. And look at how, in spite of the fact her hair is blowing and her dress is blowing and we're seeing more and more of the pier, it's still got that tracking going on. It's still keeping an eye on the area that I want to isolate. And it's done. Once that's finished, you click on Done. It now creates the mask. Now you see this edging right here. That's only on the first frame because I couldn't get the mask to be tight. When I move one frame forward, notice that it automatically shrank that mask. So I wanted to give myself enough room, which is why I started on the first frame. I want to give myself enough room that I could delete that frame without screwing up my entire sequence. Now when I play this, And she's marching down to the sea. And her hair's blowing, and it's still holding that. That just, that just leaves my jaw on the floor. That's amazing. But there's one more thing we can do. Let me illustrate this. This is the 
BVE trade show in London 2014, 10 years ago, and I made the mistake of not bringing a light to do my shoot in London. I had a camera and a tripod and audio and everything else, but no light. That one mistake has generated more training video than if I had this thing lit in the first place. In the past, the way we would make my face visible is I would put a mask in here, an oval mask that roughly equated to my face, and I would track that. And you may have seen that demo. And I would then change, but it doesn't, it, it still looks like it's just, it's bogus is what it looks like. So I'm going to put my, my playhead, remember that flash that I had before? If I start my playhead here, I'm going to get a flash where that mask isn't quite right. I can't start at the first frame because I'm not even in the first frame. So I need to start at the end. So I'm going to start the very last frame. And rather than drag magnetic mask in, which is going to make the background disappear, I want to apply this to a color grade. So with the clip selected, I'll go up to here and select color wheels. At the top of both of all the color selections, that's hue and saturation, that's color wheels, that's color board, that's whatever that new one is that I don't use. At the top here, there's a mask, and magnetic mask has now been added to it. When I add magnetic mask, now I'm going to drag across. Notice how the plus key is selected. I'm going to drag across my shirt and up into my face. Then I'm going to click the plus key, and I'm going to add the rest of me right around in here. I'm going to try to keep it relatively close to my head, but if I go over just a hair, that'll be okay. Click the minus, get rid of this little bump right there, because I can. Add this, so I get rid of that spot right there. Okay, close enough. Now, I'm still going to have that flash, because the mask doesn't exactly align with my body for the last frame of the clip. But I'm going to analyze backwards right here. And notice how it's instantly zoomed or, or shrunk that mask even when my hands come in, the mask is following. As I move and gesture, the mask is following my entire body. It's ignoring background activity. And because I started on the last frame, it's going to take me all the way back to the first frame and where I walk out of the video. Okay, I'm now clicking Done. And now we can make our changes. Let's go back to, let's turn off the effects panel. Double-click the title up here to blow that up to full screen. As I look at this, let's um, control command one to hide the browser. Command seven to display scopes. Okay, first thing I want to do is I'm going to go outside the mask right down here. I want to pull the highlights down so those lights are not as bright. Then I'm going to go inside the mask and pull the highlights up a bit right about there. Most of that work has got to be on the mid-tones, so I'm going to pull the mid-tones up right about there. Add some saturation so it looks like I haven't died. Pull the black level down a bit to give us some texture, and I'm just sort of tweaking this a bit till it looks the way I want it to look. Uh, right about there. Okay, good. This is before and this is after. Now let's go to the very front here and spacebar. And look at how that looks. Now it's not just my face that's been highlighted, but the whole thing looks like I've been better lit. Now I could argue I need more saturation. All right, you've argued. Let's make that happen. Boost the saturation a bit more. Now I've got a little bit of halation right here. See that halo? So let's just go back to the feather and just decrease the feather just a hair. Probably about there. And now we'll go back and watch the whole thing. Is that amazing or what? That took an absolutely just awful shot and made it look, I mean, yeah, I've got to get rid of that last frame. Let's go back down to here. That last frame has got all that weird etching, so I back up one frame and it's gone. That is flat out amazing.
This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar looking at the new features inside Apple Final Cut Pro 11. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at larryjordan.com store and look for Webinar 373. By the way, when you need to stretch your training dollars, membership in our video training library saves you money and time. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only nineteen ninety nine. That's more than 1,900 movies, hundreds of hours on a wide variety of subjects. Plus, premium members can download practice media and projects. Our training covers Apple, Adobe, and DaVinci software. We update it multiple times each month. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.